welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a review roundup video. I meant to do individual reviews on most of these palettes, but alas, it's almost the end of February and we're still here, so I thought it would be fun to review some of these palettes because you guys have actually been leaving comments saying, hey, I'm waiting to hear about your thoughts on this particular thing or that particular thing before buying it. So here we are, let's go ahead and bang this one out. So I went back to my community post from a month ago. I had asked, which eyeshadow palettes should I review next? The Alomar palettes, the Hive Collection, Berries and Cream, Colourpop's New Singles, and Sydney Grace's Autumn Rain. And Autumn Rain won, Colourpop came second, both Alomars came third, Berries and Cream came fourth, and the Hive Collection came in last. So, not last, but fifth. So let's just go ahead and talk. I did grab some new eyeshadow palettes I've been testing that I kind of wanted to share my thoughts with you guys about. Some of these are palettes I've used multiple times and, you know, kind of figured how I felt. But like this one, I feel like I should use more because I ultimately can't decide if I feel like this one is similar enough to the first one, the Latte palette, where you don't really need it because I feel like a lot of the colors are kind of similar. This one is obviously more berry but I like how many neutral shimmers are in the other one because I feel like that would make it more everyday. Not super jazzed by this formula as I was with the first palette. It's an okay palette. I love the packaging. I kind of wish she had stuck to her aesthetic of the big tin pan palettes versus fitting in two extra shades in this one. I just like how uniform those were. And this one is a little bit bigger than the other palettes too, if I remember correctly. So I kind of wish she hadn't changed it up. I wish, I wish she had like stuck to the theme of her palettes because I felt like that worked really well. But yeah, this is the Berries and Cream palette. It's okay. I don't love it. I know a lot of YouTubers are really enjoying this one. Not my favorite of all the palettes I've been playing with the last couple of weeks. The other one I want to throw in are these two Tom Ford palettes. I did take these traveling with me when I was in California and Vegas. I thought it would be the perfect time for me to focus on these. And honestly, you guys, they're in the packaging. They're in the boxes because I actually really, really, really want to return these. Unfortunately, I missed the return win window where I could get money back for these from Sephora. So I think what I'm going to do is take them in to my Sephora inside JCPenney and get a JCPenney Sephora gift card. I did take these into Sephora in Vegas to return, but she was gonna give me a gift card that was a store card that would only work at Sephora, like Sephora freestanding stores, and I don't have a freestanding Sephora by me, so I didn't think that was the greatest idea. Plus these palettes are kind of spendy, so I wanna be able to use it if I see something I like. It was an in-store gift card, so I couldn't use it online if I wanted to, is what she told me, so I decided to go the route where I'm returning them in my Sephora store here in town, which is a JCPenney Sephora. So I have two shades. This is the African Violet and this is the Photosynthesis. All I have to say is I feel like Tom Ford is not really my vibe. I just saw Michelle here on YouTube. I will link the video if I remember, but she ranked all her favorite Tom Ford quads and she has like almost 20 quads. So there's some people that swear by these. For me, not my makeup taste. They're very sheer. Um, she did actually rank these ones pretty low in her collection, but she kind of said they're kind of brighter. She prefers the more neutral ones. I totally get it, but I don't know. I feel like for as hyped as these are, I can't justify the price point and tell you guys, you know, go buy these because I just don't feel like they're that great. Like, sorry. So. There's my two cents on the only two Tom Ford eyeshadow quads I've ever tried. I don't think I'm planning on buying any more. Haven't had the best experience with them and that's okay. We're moving on. Next thing I have been enjoying is this guy. This is the ColourPop single release. They did this closer to the start of the year. They came out with all of these beautiful shades or was it last year? I can't even remember. They came out with these gorgeous new shades to their line and I've really been enjoying them. I love ColourPop singles. I can't stop buying them. It's so terrible. <laughs> Um, but now I feel like I'm up to my eyeballs in ColourPop eyeshadow singles, so I should stop. Um, but this is just a fun way to get a colorful palette. Um, there's still some really distinct color stories in here, so 
If you want to do some purples, there's a little bit of like a pop of pink. You can do some blue eye looks, some greens, some neutrals. So they've really done a great job. If you want to make a custom quad, that's something you can do with these. I love that they gave you the palette for free and they all fit in there perfectly. So if you're looking for some fun singles or you just want to buy this entire, you know, palette and 24 shadows, you can definitely do that very easily on ColourPop. And yeah, there's a lot of ColourPop in my life right now because they're coming out with new things and they're so affordable. I don't feel too guilty buying ColourPop, so I know it's a problem. <laughs> it's a real problem I have. Next, um, let's talk about this guy. This is the Lethal Cosmetics Hive Collection and I bought this off of their website. Now, Lethal Cosmetics is a German indie brand. I heard about them through Angelica when she was featuring them in a Will I Buy It video and the color palette just spoke to me. I love this row of greens right here. These three greens are gorgeous and I actually really like this palette. The greens, the mattes are beautiful. I've done quite a few different eye looks with this on my Instagram stories. If you're interested, I have a Makeup 365 highlight where I show you guys like my everyday makeup looks on there and I did feature this palette a few times because I was testing it and I really like it. I can't remember the price point. It is a bit pricey though because you do have to ship it internationally and stuff like that so I wouldn't say like hey like this is your first eyeshadow palette you should order this but I must say great customer service very fast efficient they're so cool and sweet and like very much supportive of smaller influencers. They have DM'd me. I think I talked to maybe the owner. She said how, I, t I asked her how she got her brand started and she said she felt like there wasn't enough, you know, options as far as indie in Europe and that's what prompted her to start this brand and I thought it was very cool. I actually picked up a, another collection from them. I don't know where it is. I got a lot of makeup that I <laughs> need to film for so I will show you guys maybe in an upcoming video, but I actually really enjoy this color combo. I think it's a ni nice mix of neutrals with some fun pops of color. You can wear this every day. I wear these shades on a regular basis. It's totally normal for me now to wear green eyeshadow to work and stuff like that, but I really like this. So really enjoy that and I do think they are a really fun indie brand to check out. Here is an indie brand that you guys kind of told me, you guys warned me, so this is on me that I bought these, but I did take a poll saying, hey, do you guys think Almar is worth the hype? I hear everyone mentioning their first palette in their favorites videos, and a lot of people told me, they're like, I don't use my palette, I got mine in a BoxyCharm, that's why I talk about it or use it, I would have never bought it otherwise. And I was just so curious because you guys know me, Curiosity and me. I'm the cat. So I bought this one and then right when I was eyeing this, they came out with this one. So I was like, shoot, I might as well buy both if I'm gonna, you know, pay for it. So I did. And I'll say this much. I like this palette more than I like this one. This color combo is very confusing to me. I don't really know like that you could pull off a lot of these eyeshadows, if you wear them together, I mean, I can see some looks, but I don't know that you could successfully incorporate all these shades into one eyeshadow palette look, into one eyeshadow look and like wear it nicely. I don't know, these are just not my colors. I knew that when I saw it, I was just like, eh, fuck it, I'll buy it because that's what I do. This one is nicer, but again, like I tried to test these out as much as I could, but I have so much eyeshadow, you guys, like I would rather, wear something I like, then just keep reaching for these. So these are like an okay, I would say they're definitely hyped on YouTube. I don't see the hype, but if you do, that's great. And they're just okay. Okay guys, so I did just post a Get Ready With Me featuring this palette. This is the Rendezvous palette by ColourPop and this was a Ulta exclusive at some point. I think these are available now on ColourPop's website, correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember, but this was one of those where I didn't really need this, but I bought it anyway, because that's what I do, and I bought it on ColourPop's, no, on Ulta's website, because I had the 20% off coupon, and I was like, why not? And so I actually ended up really enjoying this. Is this like unique, one of a kind? Not really, um, but I think it's a cool palette. I think it has a really solid place in 
somewhere like Ulta where they don't carry the entire ColourPop range. I think it's cool that they did something exclusive and I can see people like really this catching their eye because that beautiful blue shade, this is a gorgeous blue. It's definitely very unique. It's not just like a tur turquoise standard blue. It's a little bit more jewel toned which I think is gorgeous and this red shade is definitely very unique as well. What is this called? Our Secret. It's like a beautiful thank you next kind of shade with that gold red foil. So a very very stunning palette. I would totally recommend it. I definitely need to play with this more but the ColourPop formula you guys does not do me wrong so I feel pretty confident recommending that to you guys. And then this is another little quad I have picked up. This is the Pillow Talk Quad by Miss Charlotte Tilbury. And this is the only Charlotte Tilbury eye quad I own. And I was sort of disappointed. I think this palette is stunning, just not particularly my makeup taste. I use this on my friend Chelsea, who is significantly lighter than me. I will, if I remember, I'll try and post a picture of her makeup. But this eyeshadow looked so beautiful on her. It was just very natural. The shimmer topper shade, just, oh my god, her eyes were like glistening. They weren't like over the top foil. There was just like a beautiful shimmer. It was very subtle. I really like it. So I feel like this is more suitable for lighter skin tones. I know one of my friends here on Instagram actually, she is in Qatar and she went in to get her makeup done at Charlotte Tilbury in the Middle East and they did a makeup look on her and she's tan. She's from Pakistan so she has a very similar skin tone to me. Her makeup looked beautiful but hey, I'm not a Charlotte Tilbury trained makeup artist. So on me, this looks like very, very subtle. I don't hate it. It's just not me because I'm so used to wearing like fun, colorful makeup and this is very like dull to me. I'm not trying to be mean. If this is your vibe, that's totally cool. But I do think this looks gorgeous on my lighter skin friends. I'm so excited because I'm doing my friend's wedding makeup in September and I feel like this quad is gonna look beautiful for bridal makeup, so I'm very glad I have this. I just, it's not really my vibe, but if you're lighter, I can totally see this working really well as an everyday palette for you. And this is really teeny tiny, so it's definitely gonna fit in like a little makeup bag, which is nice if you're like one of those people that takes all your makeup with you. This is fantastic. Okay guys, I feel like I saved the best for last, and I wanted to talk to you guys about the Sydney Grace Autumn Rain Palette. I was totally on the fence about buying this. I didn't even buy it when it first launched because I looked at the shades and I was like, eh, you know, not really my vibe. I feel like the white background really like tones everything down. But you guys, once I got it, I started playing with it and it is a stunning palette. I would say this is my favorite one from all of the ones I've talked about today. Sydney Grace's formula is so nice, so buttery. The shimmers oh uh, they're so beautiful like they just oh do you guys see that like that green is so pretty that's called fallen splendor um i love this shade called wondrous nights like it's such a beautiful taupe shade it reminds me of one of their cream shadows i love the mattes they just blend so beautifully and the shimmers are beautiful and this is just a really great way for you guys to try sydney grace i know so many of you reach out to me and constantly talk about how you want to try Sydney Grace and I totally get it you know when you see loose pans and it's not in a palette it can be intimidating because you don't want to buy a palette from somewhere then you have to buy the shadows and you gotta put it all together it is hard so something like this I think was perfect for them because it's really going to give people more opportunity to try the brand I'm so excited to see what else they come out with in 2019 and I really love this palette and yeah, I'm just, I'm so freaking excited. They've already come out with a extension shade range of like really beautiful greens and grays and stuff like that. It looks so gorgeous, but I'm so happy with my Sydney Gray single collection right now. I'm not planning on adding to it, but I really, really enjoyed playing with the Autumn Rain. So if you've been on the fence about any of it, I would definitely say this one is my favorite. 
of everything I talked about today. Of course, ColourPop is always good. If you're looking to try another indie brand, the Hive collection is gorgeous. You just have to keep in mind that they are overseas. So, you know, it's a little bit more spendy. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this palette review roundup. I definitely want to do more dedicated videos. Roundups aren't really my thing because I like to be a little more detailed and go into things with you guys, but I just wanted to catch up because like I said, I had seen a few people comment saying, hey, I'm waiting for your review on the Autumn Rain palette before I can decide if I want to buy it. So I thought it would be quicker and easier for you guys if I just did this. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if this type of video is okay with you guys or if you'd rather wait for me to come back and just do like a full review. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. That's everything from me guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in my next one. Bye.